Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating a basic yet very crucial concept in hypothesis testing, that is, a one-proportion z-test, that can be used to determine whether an observed proportion of some outcome that you have observed in a sample of events, for example, does deviate significantly from some preset value. And the easiest example that we can use to investigate the properties of the one proportion that test and learn how to apply it in Excel is the realizations of coin tosses. For example, it might be quite uh, intuitive that you might want to test whether a coin is fair or not. That is, whether the proportion of heads or tails from a series of throws is equal to 50% or whether it is statistically indistinguishable from 50%. And here, as an example, we have got two series of tosses from two different coins. So the first coin we tossed 80 times and got a record of heads and tails, and the second coin we also tossed 80 times and got a sequence of heads and tails. So let's now um, describe the uh, realizations of these tosses and apply a one proportion Z test to those coin tosses. So first of all, we have to count how many heads and how many tails have we've got in our samples. So here we can simply use the count if function, applying it to the whole array of heads or tails realizations. And here we can count heads. So count the H's and drag it across to count how many H's there are in the second coin observations as well. And then we can just copy this whole formula, paste it over here and substitute H with a T to count how many tails there are and drag it across in a similar fashion. And now we can calculate the overall sample size, that is how many heads there are plus how many tails there are. And to double check that you haven't missed anything, we can verify that both uh, sample sizes are equal to 80. Now we can calculate the observed proportion of heads in our two tosses. Uh, equivalently, we could have applied it to tails as well. The um, implementation of the test would not change, but just for simplicity, we've got heads here first. So let's calculate the proportion of heads. So here we can simply divide the uh, number of realizations that were heads onto the total number of realizations, that is the sample size n, or equivalently we could have divided onto the sum of heads plus tails. And here we see that the first coin returns heads 47.5% of the time, which is different to 50%, but is that statistically different from 50%, or is this deviation just due to random chance? That's something that one proportion Z test would tell us. And then we also enforce the same formula for the second coin, and here we see that the observed proportion is much lower, at 32.5%. So we already can be more suspicious with regards to the second coin in comparison to the first coin. However, to rigorously test and um, justify the uh, outcome, whether we uh, determine those coins as fair or biased, well, a fair coin would be a coin whose realizations of heads and tails do not statistically significantly differ from 50%, and a biased coin would be a coin that tends into one direction, and significantly so. We have to compare those two proportions to the expected proportion. Here, we do not compare the two uh, among each other. That would be a two proportions that test that we would investigate in a future video. Here, we compare both of them uh, independently uh, to our expected proportion to a null hypothesis of a fair coin that would obviously uh, mean that the observed proportion we expect to get is 50%, exactly 50%. So now we can use those uh, two uh, numbers to calculate our difference and then calculate the z stat using the Laplace approximation of a binomial variable. Simply because if you've got enough throws, enough observations, enough coin tosses in our case, you can approximate the uh, random variable of a number of realizations as um, a normally distributed variable with uh, standard deviation equal to uh, the 
observed expected probability times 1 minus expected probability over n. And if you take the square root, you get the standard error. That's quite a common uh, approximation that we use when, uh, the, when doing the Laplace approximation of a binomial variable. So here we can calculate the z-stat by uh, figuring out how many standard errors away from the expected proportion we are. And that can be naturally interpreted as a z-stat, and we can plug it into a standard normal distribution and get our p-value to test our hypothesis. So let's do that. Let's calculate the z-stat using the uh, Laplace normal approximation of a binomial variable. Here we can do that as our sample size is quite large. Generally, as a rule of thumb, you can use this approximation if your sample size is higher than 30. It is higher than 30, so we're good to go. Here we can calculate our z-stat by subtracting the expected proportion from the observed proportion in the numerator and in the denominator we input the square root of the expected proportion times 1 minus the expected proportion and dividing it by the sample size or n and then we close the brackets and enforce this formula. One uh, question that might arise is why do we use the expected proportion here instead of the observed proportion? Well, this is because the null uh, hypothesis is that the uh, coin tosses or the number of heads are uh, distributed as a uh, approximately or asymptotically normal distribution with uh, p equal to 0 0.5. So given the fact that we are comparing it against the null with p of 0 0.5, that's why we input the expected probability, not the observed probability, in the denominator. And for the first coin, we have got a negative z-stat. Well, negative z-stat means that we deviate from the expected proportion uh, to the lower end. However, this z-stat is not that high, and we could compare it to the critical values, or we could calculate p-values, and compare those to the confidence interval of our choice. However, if we apply the same logic, the same formula, to the second coin, we have got a much higher z-stat in magnitude, and it's also negative simply because 32.5% is much lower than 50%. And now, to determine statistical significance of such deviations, we can apply a two-tailed z-test. Why two-tailed? Well, because at the start, we have got no idea where a biased coin could deviate, and that's why we have to account for potential deviations for both ends of the distribution. So to apply a two-tailed z-test in Excel, we can impose two times one minus standard normal distribution function, norm as dist, input the absolute value of the observed z statistic. Why the absolute value? Because we do account for deviations into both directions, and that is why we can disregard the sign in that case. And we need to input one here for the cumulative distribution function and not the probability density function. And then we close the appropriate parentheses and enforce the formula for the first coin and get a p-value of 65.47%. That can be interpretable as this deviation being random with a probability of around 65%, meaning that this deviation is not statistically significant as your p-value does exceed all conventional thresholds. It's higher than 10%, it's all the more so higher than 5% 1%, isn't it? And now we can drag it and apply for the second coin, and here we see that our p-value is very small. There is a very small chance that a fair coin would produce such a deviation from the expected proportion of 50%, and that allows us to deduce that this particular coin is actually biased. And this p-value and this z-stat are significant at 1%, as this p-value is less than 1%. So here, a one-proportion z-test allows us to determine that whereas the first coin is most definitely fair, the second coin is dodgy and is most likely biased with quite a high level of statistical significance. And obviously one proportion z-tests are very useful in all kinds of applications. You uh, can determine whether a coin is fair, but you can also determine whether asset managers do outperform the benchmark in higher than 50% of the cases. Whether, for example, a company does uh, fulfill its uh, own guidelines and regulations, for example, uh, less than several uh, percentage of goods it produces can be recalled for some defects, and so on and so forth. So this particular testing procedure has many applications in uh, business finance or economics cases. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make to see any further suggestions in videos in business, economics, or finance topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.